Hi everyone and welcome to Down the Scope. This is a snail's kidney and this is what it looks like under the microscope. Compare that to a mammalian kidney and you might be wondering how the snail manages to filter its blood with a seemingly simpler organ system. Well, here's a quick five point summary. Number one, kidney location. You'll have seen images of where kidneys are in vertebrates, two separate organs embedded near the spine in the lower back. But a snail's kidney is in a completely different place. Snails have a single kidney which is located under their shell. Here is a snail with part of the shell removed. You can see the kidney here, right next to the heart. When it's dissected out, you can see the kidney as an orangey-yellow sac adhered to the pericardium, the membrane which houses the heart. This is what it looks like on a microscope slide. Number two, filtration. Excretory systems tend to have three basic components, filtration, secretion, and reabsorption. In vertebrates, the filtration occurs in the glomerulus. In some snails, filtration occurs across specialized areas of the heart wall, which contain cells similar to the podocyte in the glomerulus. Those that don't produce urine via the heart have a specialized area of the kidney instead, which was discovered in 1990. Unfortunately, this region isn't present on the slide I have at the moment, but I might find it at some point in the future. Number three, the renopericardial duct. Urine that's produced by the filtration in the heart goes into the pericardium, but how does it reach the kidney? Well, by the renopericardial duct, of course, a structure that has its origin in snail embryo development. Here it is, at least uh, I think it is, there are no good texts describing what the cells of the renopericardial duct look like, and no pictures. One paper describes it as strongly ciliated, and that's exactly what we have here. If we zoom in on the cells lining the duct, you can see hundreds of tiny hair-like projections on the surface of the cells. These are cilia, very similar to the ones you'll find lining larger airways in mammals. The cilia will beat rhythmically together to move fluid from the pericardium to the kidney, ensuring a one-way flow of primary urine. Number four, secretion. Once filtration is over, the primary urine can be modified. In mammals, this happens in the renal tubules. In the land snail, secretion of waste products mainly takes place in the kidney. Here you can see a central lumen with projections lined by large epithelial cells. These projections are called excretory folds. Many of the cells have a large, clear vacuole in the cytoplasm, which is made of deposited calcium salts, uric acid, and purine that are byproducts of protein metabolism. These molecules form large concretions within a vacuole, which progressively enlarges before being released into the kidney lumen. Here, you can even see some of the cells releasing out their contents. Number five, reabsorption. Reabsorption of water and solutes does occur in the glandular kidney, but most of it happens further down the excretory system in the primary ureter. The ureter is lined by highly active cells and has slightly folded walls, so more cells can have contact with the lumen. The cells are lined by microvilli, also known as a brush border, giving a fuzzy appearance to the cell surface. These microvilli increase cell surface area, meaning more space for membrane channels and transporters involved in reabsorption. The water content of urine varies depending on the environment and whether the snail is trying to retain water or not. If lots of water is absorbed, then the crystalline concretion secreted by the glandular kidney can end up forming firm pellets rather than watery urine. In times of water abundance, the ureter can be flushed through by the snail to avoid blockages. The ureter ends next to the rectum, which exits the snail close to the pneumostome, the hole through which it breathes. This is most clearly seen in slugs, which don't have a shell. So that's how snails create and modify their urine. A completely different system to the vertebrate kidney, but apparently just as effective at maintaining a constant internal environment. Because the word snail encompasses such a wide variety of organisms, there are so many variations in anatomy and physiology of the excretory system, you'd need a whole book chapter to discuss them. Incidentally, if you'd like to read more, I based most of this video on the chapter on mollusk excretory systems in the book Biology and Evolution of the Mollusca. If you want to find out more about what organs you can see on a microscope slide of a snail, I already made a video about that. Otherwise, consider giving this video a like or subscribing to the channel. You can also check out the website, look at the slides, and comment which slides you'd like me to make a video on next. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and are looking forward to some more content. So until next time, goodbye.